Hello everyone, how are you doing? Happy weekend, <laughs> happy Saturday. Hope you are all having a fantastic day, whatever you are, whatever it is you're doing. I mean, it's weekend, so of course, um, you know, I'm assuming everybody is having a fantastic weekend. Um, even if you're sleeping the whole weekend, I'm sure it's fantastic. <laughs> well, welcome to Facts and Two Cents. As you know, this is a channel that's supposed to do conditions of Sussex. Harry, Megan, Archie, Baby Lily, Mama Doria, Pula Guy, the chickens, and all the Invictus community. Welcome ev everyone. Um, oh, this has been, you know, actually talking about Baby Lily. Ooh, in a few days, Baby Lily would be one. Wow. <laughs> Just realizing, like, it feels like yesterday Baby Lily was born, and now in a few days, Baby Lily is going to be one. <laughs> And so, oh my goodness, it is, uh, they grow so fast. I'm like, oh, goodness gracious. They definitely do grow up fast, those kids. So um, next thing you know, we'll be celebrating baby Lily's, you know, second birthday. It should be like a screaming toddler. <laughs> but um, the terrible twos. But yeah, it's just, it's really wild to think about it. It's like, wow, that was almost a year ago. That baby Lily was born, so very exciting what is gonna happen in the uk with baby lily you know her birthday is it gonna be a christening is it a birth who knows nobody knows i have no idea harry and megan of course have been very quiet about what they're doing with their family rightly so i hope they remain that way i hope we don't see them at all for this entire jubilee i hope they as harry said that they you know they it's gonna be a private visit Frankly, I hope it stays that way. Honestly, I was really, I'm really, I was really hoping that since the queen is at, where is she, is Balmoral, I think she is, that they'll actually go there for a few days and hang with her and then go back home and skip the whole Jubilee stuff, you know, <laughs> but, you know, who knows what they're actually going to do. Um, very, very, very interesting, you know as to what their plans are. Of course, the British press are like speculating away at every single thing. You mean, it's just everything. They just, it's like, you know, there is a queen you could pay attention to. There is a future king and future, you know, queen Camilla. There is a future, future queen and future, future king and a future, future, future prince and princesses. You could really focus on them, you know, and it's just like, Lord, leave the Sussexes alone. They're not even there. They're in Montecito playing polo, you know, it's just craziness. But, um, you know, and then the last couple of days with, um, you know, Megan, as we all know, Megan was in uh, Texas visiting um, the families there. And, um, you know, because of this, obviously, this, the, the school shooting there and, it's, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, it's such a great deed, you know, it's a great thing that she did, you know, she flew from her home, went to Texas and um, really went there to help, to support, to do anything she could do. And for me, that's a, and for any normal person and any, uh, you know, right thinking, well, this country, whenever you think right, you're like, oh, no, not the Republicans, but any person with common sense, really, that's a good thing to do. It's a good thing. It's a good deed. It's, it's, it's showing that you care, you know, but unfortunately, there are half of us that just, I don't know what is wrong with some people, that any kind of good deed is spun in such a negative way that it's like you almost don't recognize the good deed anymore. And it's just unreal. And it's it's magnified like a million times. Anything, you know, if Megan breathe, if she doesn't do something, they get angry. If she does something, they get angry. So it's basically a no-win situation. So it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you live your life, they get angry, they get angry. They'll, they'll have to live with that, you know? And it's just, it's unreal. So, you know, BuzzFeed broke the story a few days ago that Megan um, was, you know, she visited um, Uvalde, uh, Uvalde, oh, I think that's how we say it, Uvalde, uh, Texas, um, to visit um, a blood donation center and, you know, to, she, you know, bring food and, and really, you know, 
encourage and be there to just be there as a comfort for people. And then she also visited the memorial, which, um, you know, there are press photographers there, you know, they've, you know, as with all of these things, there are always press photographers would be hanging out in those areas. You know, they'll be photographing whoever comes to mourn. I mean, they're not going to, you know, interrupt the person, but they're going to be photographing. You know, a lot of times they're there looking to see if celebrities would go or, you know, whatever. It's, you know, that is the press. They would do what they do, you know. And so, they, of course, this is an international story. So they are press here from all over. And so Megan went to the, um, you know, after leaving the blood donation center, she went there, you know, to pray her visit. Obviously, there were camera there. And I think what happens, I looked, I saw a video today. Um, you know, it was a, like a BBC camera person, either a camera person or a reporter that recognized her. Nobody else did because she's wearing a baseball cap and jeans and, you know, a t-shirt and sneakers without socks. I mean, she just looked like a regular old person just, you know, in the neighborhood, just came to pay her respects. You know, just from looking at her, if I had walked up on that scene, I would not even think Meghan Markle. That would be the furthest thing from my mind. Even if I saw her, I would not think Meghan, you know, because I'd be like, what would Meghan be doing there? You know, and um, because, you know, you wouldn't expect um, her to be there. And so um, I think a British journalist uh, recognized her, um, the BBC journalist, and the, you know she immediately turned around and left and walked to her car. And it seems like the the the, the BBC journalist was uh, following her and asking her something, and she basically just j jumped into her the car with um actually Mandana Dayani was also there. I think Mandana, I think she does the podcast for Archwell. Um, but she also jumped in their um their car van, whatever you call it. Um and um to leave and so of course because there were press there the british press the um you know royalists the derangers the the um uh, hater what pick a name for them you know they have turned this into a megan doing this for pr and you know majority middle-aged white british women and some Amer american white Br american women um usually right wing um decided that they're going to you know attack Meghan markle for being there and calling it a pr um uh, you know P uh, P pr um opportunity um that that she brought basically they they saw the cameras there and just assume it's Netflix camera. Like any camera that and close to Meghan and Harry, it's a Netflix camera. I'm telling you, Netflix has a whole bunch of cameras they need to be sending out around everywhere Meghan and Harry goes because anywhere there's a camera, it's a Netflix camera to them. And so again, we know why the British press keeps harping on Netflix because is what they want to do is destroy Meghan and Harry's relationship with Netflix. They can sour it and get enough people angry and, um, you know, attack. Netflix because of the deal. Netflix stock obviously, has, you know, has sunk. I think seventy five percent. They lost at least seventy five percent value on their their stocks, and and you know they have lost a whole ton of subscribers. They also um, expect to lose another two million the second quarter. So they are not in a great place right now. We know they've been cutting uh, staff, and you know, cutting uh, especially they uh, they basically eliminated their uh, animation department. You know, cut Megan's um, Pearl and you know, Anna DuVernay, she, her thing got cut, her film got cut as well. A ton of people got, you know, basically all of their, their animations that they were developing are all gone. Only a couple of, uh, probably two or three of them still remain with Netflix. And so if they, they are doing what everything they can in their power to destroy the relationship between Meghan and Harry and Netflix. And that's what they're doing. That's why they keep harping on Netflix. And also too, you know, they know that the crown is coming out. And so they will they just keep doing it. And so it basically what the British press do, this is, this is just an, with Netflix now, it's not another example of how the British press monster someone or something. And um, they basically, if they can't control that entity they will control how or at least they try to control how other people see that entity so or that person which is what they've done to megan and which is what they're doing with netflix and it's um the constant every single article you'll see them mention megan and harry the price of their house the price of everything they were 
they will bring up and they will bring up Netflix, their hundred million de dollar deal or one third. It depends on what day they're writing. It's either one hundred million, one hundred fourteen million, or one thirty two million or one twenty million. It depends. Whichever day mood they're in, the price fluctuates. And whatever paper you're reading, the price fluctuates. So again, this is another case of monstering, and this is what they do. And obviously, this is no different. So they're they have been so effective at embedding these um, neg negativity about Megan into the minds of their readers that them their readers want. They don't even know why they hate Megan and Harry. They don't know why. They have no facts about any of this stuff, but they will spout this thing. It's like, it's sort of like they have been brain like someone take out their brain and stuck the daily mail in there that's repeating in their mind on you know it's like it's just going on repeat or the daily mail or the sun or the mirror express whatever tabloid it is they read and it's just it's um it's it's an awe inspiring thing to watch like normal what what should be um people who have common sense who are educated who, who you would think actually because you will see people you look at their profiles and you have engineers and lawyers and bankers and politicians people you would assume have common sense and yet these people would be spewing out things that come directly from the tabloids directly from the tabloids and it's on me and they will share these things and it is like it is shocking to watch how effective the British tabloids are in brainwashing people. And that's what they do. They monster people, they brainwash their, their readers, and that's what they do. And then you couldn't, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like trying to talk to a Trump person here in the U.S., it's like there is no reasoning with them. It's kind of like they can become unreason, unreasoning animals. I mean, even animals have, you know, they have common sense. It's like the tabloids have relieved these, what would normally be an educated person of any kind of common sense, of any kind of reason, of any kind of, well, let me sit here and think this through. This can't, doesn't make any sense. It's like all of it gone. And so this is the situation that we jumped into here. And it's like the vitriol that came at Megan because of, again, leaving her home, going to Texas to serve. All she wanted to do was to help, you know? And so even the, the, the original article by BuzzFeed, which Ellie Hall uh, wrote, but she wrote it with like three other BuzzFeed um, reporters. So that's why I felt like, okay, at least she's a little part of it. Um, I was not going to touch that article until I saw other reporters there as well. But, you know, when they wrote the article, you know, Ellie Hall had to come because people were having these ideas, like Megan brought her, press, you know, uh, press and she brought cameras and she brought Netflix on. And so even Ellie Hall as unethical as Ellie Hall is, she even tweeted out that, no, that's not the true at all. Megan did not come with cameras. She did not come with any press people. She literally came with her team and none of that included any press. And so, but people wouldn't believe them. They just, again, so brainwashed by the, the tabloids that they, there was no reasoning with these people at all. So the only thing you could do is block them and if they do something completely out, then you report them. That's the only thing you can do. You just, you know, not engaging in that madness is the best bet, the best way to go. But, or, you know, the ones that seem a little bit, which I did the last couple of days, the ones that seem a little bit like, okay, they have reasoning skills at least. I would respond and let them know, no, what you're spreading is a lie. That is not correct. And then, you know, give them the correct information. And, you know, I haven't really heard back. I already heard back from one of them, but who knows? And also to the majority of the people spreading the tabloid gossip are also bots and trolls. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it was, was an overabundance of negativity towards this. And, and, and not just from trolls and stuff, from reporters as well, you know, UK reporters, New Zealand, Australia, uh, was it Australia or New Zealand? One of them, you know, 
and um, former reporters from here. It just, it was unreal. But what has happened with this whole thing is that people, it's kind of flipped because Megan had been trending for like two whole days because of this. And, you know, from last week with the polo straight through this, Megan had been basically trending. And so, but what has happened, especially with the negativity towards her doing this act of kindness is a lot of people who don't necessarily and normally follow the Royals or follow Meghan and Harry or don't really even care. They have started to speak out about, no, we're going to defend Meghan. This is ridiculous. This girl went to it's an act of kindness and people are hating her. So you have, she had so much support from people that normally, again, never follow this stuff. And so it was really wonderful to see like people coming out of the woodwork are like, no, this is this is ridiculous. Nobody needs to, to be hated for doing an act of kindness. Nobody needs, even if Megan took a million cameras with her, who cares? She's there. She's there to help. Who cares? You know, it's like you take camera. It's like you committed a, a crime or something. People are more angry at Meghan Markle than they are about the cops who stood outside that classroom when kids are calling 911 for help. They stood outside that classroom and wouldn't go in to help these kids until they all, you know, most of them got shot to, to that. And they are more angry at Meghan for going to help than that. And it's just like, it's a sickness. I mean, this girl can't breathe. And so, but again, people have been coming out of the woodwork to, you know, want to correct that horrible narrative and then, you know, to support her. And so also, so BuzzFeed went back and they um, did an update on that article. Ellie Hall and Kadia uh, Goba, both from BuzzFeed, um, <clears throat> went back and spoke to the uh, Miss Rankin, who is like the director of that center for the blood where Megan went. And so she actually, you know, gave, she, they wanted to find out like, you know, what happened and what led to, you know, how Megan, you know, how, how it is that Megan came to be at the center. And, you know, she was talking about, you know, that she had heard um, Megan's people contacted her that Megan want to come. And, um, you know, and so she did. And she, you know, well, here's a little bit of what it says. Um, it says Megan Markle said, um, said she held her children a little bit tighter after learning about the Uvalde um, school shooting. The director of Uvalde Community Center, where Megan donated food, told BuzzFeed how the visit unfolded. Um, she wanted to come by, Miss um, Rankin said she wanted to come by and just see everything and, and uh, that was going on with the blood drive and to help. Her whole thing was she wanted to help, uh, Miss Rankin said. She um, she was going incognito. She, he told me um, she was going to be wearing a T-shirt and ripped jeans and that, that and a hat and mask. And, no, and so no one was going to, well, he didn't want anyone to know who she was um, because she didn't want press attention. Again, this is from, you know, the horse's mouth, really, you know, Miss Rankin, who she, you know, Megan didn't want any press attention. Um, she, she, she also went on to said, you know, um, Rankin said she was told Megan was on her way to a nearby HEB grocery store to pick up food platters for the center of, for the center's volunteers and people who were giving blood. She went and picked up trays and trays of sandwiches, snacks and everything for people who were coming in and giving blood. It was for our workers. It was for myself. It was for anybody that wanted to, you know, have lunch. She said, my name, she said, say, uh, referring to Megan, my name is Megan. She didn't go into any more details. She uh, started passing out sandwiches uh, to the people who had donated blood. And it was, she was delightful. And, you know, she, I mean, this is so wonderful. I mean, you know, she also talked about Megan, um, you know, um, she and Megan talking, you know, for about 20 minutes about what's going on in the center, what happened, you know, about the blood drive um, and all of that. She, uh, Megan also, you know, 
one of the other persons who were there, she said Megan came in and she, you know, filling up, I guess, cups and stuff with ice and passing it out to people. She was passing out sandwiches to people. Um, you know, Miss Rankin didn't even tell her husband that about Megan coming. She didn't tell anybody because, again, Megan wanted to be incognito. And so when, um, but I guess she told Megan about her husband. So when her husband came into the center, Megan was like, oh, you're Jimmy. You must be Jimmy. You know, and so it was so cool. Um, and, you know, even the workers were saying, you know, the staff were saying, you know, one was saying, you know, like, I talked to her for 10 minutes and I had no idea. No, well, you know, again, she was in mask, hat, you know, who would think Megan Marker would be there? Like, that wouldn't be, you know, even though she introduced herself as Megan, there are a million Megans in the world. And so one lady was like, you know, I talked to her for 10 minutes and we had, you know, I even told her personal things about my family and stuff. And I just thought she was, you know, a neighbor, so, you know, somebody from the community. Um, and so when she found out, they didn't find out until Megan left that it was actually Megan Markle, you know, and even with, you know, talking about the cameras and all that stuff, um, Megan what how she left is that she literally bolted out of there beto rock came in to give blood and he brought in the press and cameras and all of that stuff and megan didn't want to have any part of it she bolted out of there without even saying goodbye to miss ranking and miss so they had to call and apologize and let her know why she bolted out of there she went out the back door she went in through the back door because she didn't want to attract attention and she left at the back door you know again miss ranking didn't even know you know and so it was, um, again, you know, just the narrative, the false narrative, how quickly the false narrative spread and how quickly people are to believe the false narrative and refuse, no matter how much evidence there are, they refuse the truth. And again, we believe what we want to believe, you know, P eh, look, people want to believe a lie, they'll believe a lie, no matter how much you present them the truth they'll believe a lie. And that's what these people, they just, they wanted to believe the lie. And so therefore that's their narrative and they would not give it up. But it's just, um, again, you know, even with their negativity, it's more and more people are seeing why Meghan and Harry had to leave. And basically what they've done is prove to more and more people why Harry and Meghan, you know, first of all, that Harry and Meghan told the absolute truth on Oprah. And it's proving to the world over and over again why Meghan had to walk out of the UK, why they have to leave, because this kind of vitriol, especially coming from UK people who, um, you know, it just, it's unreal. And it's, <laughs> I'm like, God, this is, it's like a disease that just would not leave these people. It's, 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 it's amazing. I, I just, I've never seen anything like this, you know? You hear that, you, I mean, yesterday, especially, you would hear that comment all the time. So many people saying the exact same thing. They have never heard anything like that. And they are so focused on that, that they have like completely, just completely shut out the fact that all these children and two adults died, you know, were killed. And it's all become about, let me hate Meghan Markle. And so it just, it's, it's unreal. And, but, whew. Anyways, it's, yeah. But, you know, go, staying on, um, you know, going over to the, the actual tragedy, um, apart from Megan's tragedy, um, one of the most heartbreaking and infuriating and depressing things I've seen in a long time have to be this. Children, innocent children, broken to pieces. Look at the faces of these children. They are carrying pictures of dead children around their necks and standing in front of a whatever is place where they are having gun, where they're, the NRA is having a convention. 19 people just died in Texas, killed with an AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle and the NRA is having a convention where people are there to get the same rifle. And little kids are outside with these protesting because adults refuse to protect them. You know, um, this reporter tweeted out, he says, on Friday, thousands of gun owners gathered to defend and celebrate the type of law 
that made it possible for a teenager to purchase a pair of AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle days after his 18th birthday. Protesters, and go down at the bottom, the article says, uh, protesters anguish shouts. Protesters anguish shouts failed to dampen gun enthusiasm at NRA convention while NRA members browse aisles of AR-15 inspired merchandise. Children, while NRA members browse the aisles of ARA 15 inspired merchandise, children held, held signs reading, how many more kids am I next? And I don't, and I don't get the kind of, I, I just, I can't, I, I guess what I'm saying is like, I can't wrap my mind around the cruelty, the 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 kind of person you have to be to know that 19 people got gunned down with this, this weapon, ruthlessly murdered in school, a place where they're supposed to be safe, and you're at an NRA convention trying to get the same gun, enthusiastic about the same gun, while children are outside pleading with you, scared to, 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 for their life, wondering if they're gonna be next. What kind of a society is this? I, you know, I'm telling you, I don't wanna hear anyone singing America the Great. I don't want to hear talk anyone talking about this is the greatest country. You know, this is sick. This is absolutely sick. This is the only country in the world where this happened, where you have these school shootings. There are hundreds of school shootings in the last year in the United States and every other country are in single digits. And it's just, this is sick. You know, we people, you know, we like to brag it's like, oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Free to do what? Free to kill kids? Home of the brave? Well, you had cops standing out outside of a classroom where kids are begging you to come in and help them, and you stand outside terrified, even though you are armed to the hilt, and you can't go in to help them. And so I just, this is, I, I'm like. What kind of society is this? So I, you know, and I hear the, 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 the president is like, you know, something's got to be done. Something's got to be done. And everybody's like, something's like, I'm just like, look, it's time to do something. Okay. I don't want to hear something's got to be done. Somebody's got to do something who in the power to do something about this. I mean, how many more times are we going to watch children die in, in, in the faces of children that look like this? How many more? So anyways, I just, that's, I, I, I know the, the sad part of it, this is knowing that there are people in our government that know the right thing to do and refuse to do it. Ted Cruz, senator from Texas, was at that gun, that NRA meeting. And I believe he even spoke there. This is the man representing Texas. This is the man that people of Texas voted to represent them while he's allowing this to happen to their kids. The sad part of this as well is a lot of Latinos vote Republican. I would hope after this event that they're, you know, that they would change their vote and vote out these Republican and get people in there that will protect them, that will protect their kids. And it's unfortunate. It's just, oh my goodness. So we'll see. I will, I, I just, yeah. Anyway, moving on. I just, I, I, I can't wrap my, my mind around this. This is just, I, moving on. 
one of you know, you know, it's staying on the same coverage, but it's one of the things that you know with this is um that I'm glad that Harry that Megan went there because this is you know what it's done is it's really shown a world spotlight on this American problem, and you know if it was it you know it was world. It, you know, I mean, many countries knew about it, but I think Megan being there is the, you've shown an even brighter spotlight on it. So, uh, you know, even the Jamaica Observer picked it up. And so, um, because I think what needs to happen is the rest of the world need to shame America for this. They need to shame us. They need to shame us that we have no moral authority to tell anybody anything if we can't protect our children, if we are going to stand by and, and let this happen to children. The rest of the world need to shame us, you know? And unfortunately, it's like, maybe unless that happened, this would change. I'm like, look, whatever it is neither need to happen, this need to happen to protect people. None of us need to be living there, and definitely not kids, you know, need to be living in fear of these weapons. Why are why are civilians walking around with these weapons? It was so someone I actually saw this on Twitter where someone was saying that, you know, this rifle is so deadly that even the cops didn't want to go in that room, even though they were armed. And so it's like, why are people having this stuff? And so I'm glad Megan went because it again, it's the everyone in the world now, you know, most likely are picking up the story, people who probably would never pick up a story like this because she went there, they are knowing, and it's good because this is a dirty, you know, I don't know if it's a secret, but this is this is dirty. And they could, you know, wherever the U.S. goes, they could put, bring this up that, no, this needs to change. This needs to change. And whatever, if it takes the rest of the world embarrassing in my America until we change, or whatever, I, I look, I am, I am open to whatever that needs to be so that this stops happening. So, but it's good to see um, the Jamaica Observer and, you know, I'm sure other, I, I just happened to see the Jamaica Observer, um, you know, picked it up. And so, yeah, it's getting more attention than it probably would have, would have had um, if Megan hadn't been there and, and, you know, bring her the spotlight that comes with her to this. So I'm glad the more eyes on this, the better. So America cannot hide this dirty. If it was a secret before, it's no longer that this cannot be hidden and pushed under the rug because it doesn't. Yeah, it just can't. So anyways, moving on. Oh, come down from that. It's <laughs> just, oh, come down, come down, come down. <laughs> anyways, um... It's so funny. It's such a wild switch to, you know, maybe I need to do what Baron does, have like a music to take you out of one topic to another or something. Maybe I need to incorporate, you know, some kind of music to, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to steal Baron's idea because that, this is a really rough switch here from Texas to this, you know, um, but good news. Harry, you know, last week we know that they won for their charity match. And um, this week, um, yesterday actually, they played, um, they from what they won last week, that was the quarterfinals, which was a little bit confusing because they had that trophy thing. So I wasn't sure what that was about. I'm like, I thought it was the, they won the trophy, but it was actually the quarterfinals. And um, they're actually playing tomorrow for the finals because they won their match yesterday. Yesterday was the semifinals and they won their match. So they're playing for the Lyle trophy um, tomorrow. And so, but the team they're playing is the one that really beat them badly. <laughs> week ago it's like ooh uh what was it last friday yeah they they played this team and um yeah that they got ba beaten like i don't know 16 to 8 or something like that so they got walloped <laughs> but you know they bounced back on sunday and they won so it was great and so yesterday they played the semifinals and won and so now they are playing the finals tomorrow and so you know it's so funny and it's so cool because um they're just having so much fun and they you know 
people that normally, like me, who normally would never, ever think of polo, never even, all of a sudden, it's exciting to know what polo scores are. <laughs> and it's like fishing shoe. Okay, did the match end? Did anybody post about the polo match? You know, and it's just very funny um, that that's the case. But uh, yeah, so Harry um, and Nacho and the two kids, they'll be playing tomorrow for the cup. And so fingers crossed they'll win and they'll actually get to hold up that trophy. I, I have to, you know, I was thinking, I'm like, why did they hold up that trophy? Um, maybe they were manifesting a win or something, <laughs> you know, you know, you have faith and that that's what you're going to have. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so they are, so they'll be playing, I think four o'clock California time tomorrow. So wherever you are, think four o'clock Pacific time. And, um, that's when they're going to be playing tomorrow. And, you know, who knows when they, after tomorrow, who knows when they'll be heading off to the UK? Um, some of I heard I saw something that says, "Oh, they're leaving tomorrow." I'm just like, "Well, they're playing polo tomorrow, unless they're leaving late tomorrow night, which is you know a possibility." Um, who knows um, when they are leaving for the UK? And you know, again, my wish is that they go by Monday, come back on Thursday, so they could be playing polo on Friday. That's my wish, but you know, <laughs> and then skip the whole jubilee nonsense. <laughs> I just, I'm not, I'm so over the jubilee, jubilee, jubilee nonsense. So that's my wish, but who knows, whatever they do, I will respect. Uh, so, and again, you know, people are speculating. They're going to be here. They're going to do this. They may do this, you know, all kinds of things. And then also too, the press is setting up. Um, the press is set up this um, where I saw today, one of the, the, the newspaper was like, Harry promised the queen that they will not do anything, you know, outside of say the royal events. So to not overshadow the queen or take attention from the queen, that he made this promise to the queen to not, you know, take attention and all of that stuff. And it's like, you know, it's one of those articles that is just a setup. It's a setup for if Harry and Meghan decide to go off and say, do something with their charity or you know whatever the 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 tabloids could come back with harry blindsided the queen or harry lied to the queen that they weren't going to do something and and this, the whole thing is lies the whole thing is just lies they're just setting up future articles to claim that harry blindsided the queen because they're too lazy to come up with a new narrative so that's one of the nonsense that they're doing and so yeah it's just ugh, goodness but anyways Polo tomorrow, who knows what happens after that. So, oh, this is so exciting. Um, Jose Andres from World Central Kitchen. There is a movie that is made that's on Disney about World Central Kitchen. It was made by Ron Howard. And so Chef Andres um, and his team, I guess the camera followed them to all over the world where World Central Kitchen is located. You know, they basically go where the disasters are, where the need is, that's where they are. You know, even traveling through is from this picture there, you know, they are riding through high waters to go wherever it is they're going to feed people. And so they are putting some precarious situations in order to do that, including being in uh, Ukraine where bombs are falling all over that country. So um, it's, it's you know, I'm looking forward to watching it. I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to put the, um, the information in the show notes. It's actually going to be on Disney Plus. And it started streaming yesterday. So, uh, you know, if you have Disney Plus, check on over there. You'll see it. It's called We Feed People. Absolutely, exactly what they do. We feed people, and Nate Cook is one of Nate uh, Mook is one of the um, one of the uh, chefs at World Central Kitchen. He tweeted by he said, "Excited to finally share a World uh, World Central Kitchen documentary with the world. We feed people is now streaming on Disney Plus." Grateful to Ron Howard for telling our story authentically and my brother, Chef Jose Andreas, for showing me never to accept the status quo. This is a full trailer. Well, you know, there, there's the trailer for it at the bottom. And then Ron Howard, actually, director Ron Howard, uh, actually tweeted about it. It says, um, he said, it was an honor to make We Feed People and bring the origin story of World Central Kitchen to even more people's attention. Led by Chef Jose Andres and supported by his family, uh, Nate, uh, Nate Mook and so many others. It's an inspiring example of what a difference 
we as citizens can make hashtag we feed people and again it is world central kitchen you know we are doing the um fundraiser right now which is i think almost sixty four thousand. um we are doing the, the fundraiser and the that's where the money is going world central kitchen because again they are all over the world feeling feeding people because food insecurity is all around us and so um you know because and also, we know that the Sussexes um, also are, you know, they have been supporting World Central Kitchen for, you know, the last couple of years. They have, uh, you know, helped build four community kitchens, um, you know, in Dominica, Puerto Rico, um, Mumbai. I think they also done one in, oh, um, in Haiti. Um, they they actually uh, recently funded um, when the Haiti... Um, earthquake happened they also funded then emergency the emergency response there world central kitchens emergency response there and so yeah it's um it is amazing and um as we know jose andreas is is a friend of the sussexes and he actually i i said this all the time but he when harry and megan were um nominated as the 100 most influential people last year he's the one that wrote up the thing about them and he has actually did um a, a people article recently where he talks about them i mean he's like you know they are just basically just like they, they have the attitude that world central kitchen has it's like they are not people to sit back and wait to think they they run to the danger where they see danger where they see you know whatever they run towards it to help and this is exactly what you saw in megan why she was in texas she run to the struggle she run towards it while most people would run away from it or make excuses for it they run to the struggle and that's what he said about them and that's exactly his attitude and that's exactly what world central kitchen does so um if again if you have disney plus definitely check it out it is streaming now i don't know how long it's going to be streaming so definitely check it out i will as well so very excited to see that. Um, so yeah, moving. So <laughs> again, you know, I definitely I'm going to steal uh, Baron's idea to get music because I'm doing this drastic shifts um, in this episode. It's like, well, Central Kitchen, wonderful thing. And then you're like, oh, yeah, the Queen's God busted for alleged cocaine and money laundering scams days before the Star Roll, days before Star Roll in the Jubilee. And so, yeah, this dramatic switch from, you know, World Central Kitchen. So anyways, yes, Queen, <laughs> those guards, you know, the ones that ran over that little black boy, am I shocked? No, you know, <laughs> these same ones who had, you know, um, you know, remember that guy who pretended to be a priest and they had him, they, he, they invited him, had him stay over, ate and drank with him, have him, you know, give him a bed, give him breakfast the next day before they call the cops. Yeah, them. Anyway, so yes, Queens got busted for alleged cocaine and money laundering scams days before Star Roll in the Jubilee. Several members of the Irish Guard, which is due to lead the Queen's Troopy, the college celebration, won't make won't take part. They were arrested in a sting operation. The Queen's Platinum Jubilee Troop in the Color celebration will be lacking six soldiers from the Irish Guards after they were arrested along with the Coldstream Guard for alleged drug ring. The men who are under command of, oh yes, Prince William, Duke of Cambridge, stand accused of dealing Class A drugs and money laundering as part of a suspected cocaine racket. No arrests, oh, sorry, the arrests which were carried out in a series of raids in the UK, Wales, and Northern Ireland comes just weeks before, comes just weeks after Prince William presented the regiment with new colors and bestowed upon them the honor of leading the trooping of the color celebration held on June 2nd and will feature more than 1,200 soldiers and officers. Honestly, they're right at home. Money laundering, drugs. I mean, hey. <laughs> you know? I'm like, yeah, they, they, they just fit right into the palace. I mean, how many people in the palace have been, you know, arrested for drugs and, and drug, you know, drug traffic or, or, or drug addiction or drug um, possession and stuff in the palace? Yeah, I mean, this is gone. <laughs> Hello. 
you know, money laundering. Hello, you're in the royal family. <laughs> you know, remember Queen Stock Shelter, Jersey? Of course, <laughs> it's like they're right at home. So it's kind of like, you know, you just follow what you know. You Hey, following the leader here. You know, so it's just like when I saw this, I was like, yeah, well, they fit right in. They're def that's definitely right up the royal family's alley, <laughs> you know. So, but bully for them. I mean, if they were royals, I'm sure they'll get away with it. But, you know, since they're not, you know, I'm assuming jail. But it's very interesting that they were under the command of Prince William. Boy, that's how much they respect Prince William, you know. So, but very interesting. And, you know, it's so funny because this story is out there. And uh, this is from the Daily Beast, a UK, a US, um, um, you know, platform, media platform. And funny, I haven't really seen this in the, in the UK. Somehow, somehow they, they um, yeah, you would think that the tabloids at least would run with this story. I mean, it's a juicy story for tabloids, I would think. But yet, zip, zero, crickets. You know why? Because... Prince William, that invisible contract comes into play really fast when Prince William's name is there, you know? And so, yeah, and if they pick it up, they will twist it to where, oh, Prince William is as innocent as this lamb and didn't know anything, and he's not involved in any way. And nobody's saying that, you know, the article doesn't say Prince William is involved in the rocket, but it's just very interesting that the men who were doing this were under his command. You know, if, if Prince Harry, if this, if this was switched, and Prince Harry's name was attached to this, and he was in charge of this command. How many tabloid stories would we have gotten today about this story or yesterday when it was dropped? How many would we have gotten? And again, this is the invisible contract. This is why the British press are not reporters. They are, they're not journalists. You know, they will bury the story to protect the royal family. Again, as Megan said, they would lie to protect others, but they won't tell the truth to protect me and my husband and my family. Yeah. They will just, you know, omit this. They would bury this. So especially nobody wants to say anything because, you know, the precious Jubilee is coming up and, you know, we all have to be kumbaya. Anyways, moving on. Huh. Well, this is not such a drastic uh, change from that because... <laughs> Again, if the if this was the Sussexes, how many story about this we would be writing? How many of them would be coming across your you know your phone screens or your computer screens from the British press? Again, Unite Hospitality, which is like a union for housekeepers, it says as Buckingham Palace are forced to change their salary for housekeepers in order to keep them just above minimum wage. We have been sent some horrendous stories of the living conditions sustained by workers in the, in the country's richest household. Again, Buckingham Palace literally have to change their orders. They have to change their policy so that housekeepers could be just above minimum wage. So these housekeepers were below minimum wage or just that. And you think about it, this again, as I said, this is the, the country's richest household. How is it possible that they can get away with paying their housekeepers minimum wage or below? And yet this is what, this, is what the, um, this, this union is saying that they have heard horrendous stories of the living conditions sustained by these workers. And Katya, not her real name, you know, they have to protect her identity or she may lose the job. And in these hard times, you don't want to be losing your work no matter how, you know, messed up it is. Katya, not her real name, worked as a housekeeper for the royal household in 2021. She says, our accommodations was pretty dated. And, uh, and my own room had windows that were painted shut and black mold. This is in the palace. Violetta, not a real name, said, the meals provided were pre-cooked that we had to collect from a canteen at lunchtime and that, and that had to heat up in, at our accommodations once we finished work, if there was any food left, depending on when we got our break. 
again, this is the royal family. This family has more money than anyone in the country. They have more land. They have more property. They have more everything. And this is how they treat their staff. And yet the British press has the nerve gall and audacity to be talking about Harry and Meghan's staff. And again, if this was Harry and Meghan's household, how many articles would be written about this? I have seen no articles on this. And I'm going to go check again after this, but I hadn't seen any. How shameful and despicable it is. I mean, look at the rooms in the Buckingham Palace. This is one of their rooms. Look at Buckingham Palace as a top picture. How it is they can, they can get away with doing this. No wonder the staff sell their stories. No wonder there is all these leaks because they got to make a living. It's how they make a living. They leak stories so reporters would pay them to leak stories because they're like, well, I'm not getting enough money to feed my family. So then let's leak some stories. Even if we have to make it up, which a lot of it is made up. But they are trying to feed their families because why? The royal family are not paying them. And then their living situation, again, some of them live there. And again, this worker is saying that her room was dated, her window was painted shut and had black mold. And, you know, I always go back to Megan when she was doing Oprah. She said, you know, people judge us from their, what they think the royal family is, as opposed to what the reality of the royal family is. You wouldn't think royal in, 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 in a castle or a palace, they would have rooms painted shut with black mold, but here we are. You know? I mean, you know, you could look at um so Princess Anne's very messy room uh in her house, and you could say, like, okay, this is not exactly your idea, the idea of royalty that most people have. They they have idea of this grand room and all gold and all of this stuff. But the actual where people, especially people who are not royals, live is horrible. And the food, you know, it's like it, you know, they have it's something that pre-cooked, they have to get it from the canteen if there are any food left. I mean, what kind of what kind of thing is this? You know, I heard a story about when um when uh Windsor Castle, uh quite a few years ago when Windsor Castle caught a fire. And as a good part of Windsor Castle was burnt down, or burnt at least. And so the workers there stayed and rescued so much of the artwork and all of those things, make sure their prized possession was not burned up. And instead of paying the workers, what does the queen do? She offered them a tour of Windsor Castle. I guess there are parts of Windsor Castle that some of them are not supposed to be in or, you know, or they can't see. She offers them a tour. Instead of paying them for what they did for their kindness and staying there, she offered them a tour. <laughs> and it is unreal. Absolutely unreal how cheap and it, this is disgusting. And I don't understand why they're allowed to do that while the same people's tax dollars they are using to fatten themselves and give themselves more riches. And so, yeah, it just, I'm like, oy, the royal family, man. Oh, hard switch. This is where the other music should come in. That's my, <laughs> that's my change music. <laughs> because, I mean, a big, you know, well, I, I, again, it's probably not that big a drastic a change because, you know, P.S. Morgan's re relationship with the royal family, maybe not that big a change. But anyways, um, we guys remember this. We, we all remember the P.S. Morgan, you know, last year when, you know, it was, it came out that he had, um, you know, he's after leaving GMB, he's now signed a $50 million deal with uh, Fox, with Fox News, with Rupert, uh, not Fox, with Rupert. Rupert Murdoch uh, News Corp and which would give him, you know, he'd be able to write a column in the Sun in the New York Post, have a, um, his show, um, the uncensored show in Australia, the US and um, in the UK. And this was supposed to be this big thing. And he was going around, you know, um, really boasting and bragging about the show and 
I mean, the UK press went crazy with this, with this, you know, when he, he um, talked about it. It's like Piers Morgan says his new job will give Meghan Markle nightmares as he as he strokes stokes the feud, which is the one-sided feud with Meghan. Express Meghan Markle warned Piers Morgan's new job will give her nightmares. Mirror, Meghan Markle will get nightmares over every, over my new job, predicts seething Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan is celebrating securing a new job after being axed from GMB um, for his comments about Meghan Markle. Daily Mail, of course, the Daily Mail had to get in there. If Meghan Markle thinks she's won a battle with me, she's in for a big shock, Piers Morgan revealed. Why he stormed off the show, how he's worth more um, than the world's top footballer, and his new career path. Watch out, Team Sussex. Again, you know, one-sided fight here. And the son, of course. Cheers, Megan. Piers Morgan says his his son deal will give Meghan Markle's nightmares. After she tried to get him fired, Piers last night took a swipe at the Duchess of Sussex saying she'll be sweating about his new job. And in, in, in the News International says Piers Morgan calls himself Prince Harry Meghan's worst nightmare. So we remember all of this stuff. You know, him bragging about it and his, his show started and, you know, first guest would be Donald Trump and, you know, as usual, Pierce can't keep Meghan Markle out of his mouth, you know. And we started hearing all this stuff, you know, that it started out with, you know, his show. It started out with this controversy where, you know, he said Donald Trump stormed off the show. Then, you know, when the truth came out and even Trump called him out and called him, a, you know, I think a loser. And like, you know, that he said that Pierce is basically over the hill and need to retire basically his comment i don't remember verbatim what he said but he's like you know i was you know i seen him up close he doesn't have it you know and anybody who's you know what you know who seen Piers morgan who's watched him over the years whatever could tell he's a one-trick pony he's a fraud anybody could do it you know anybody could see that he has literally failed out of everything that he's done he basically fails up because he fails on one job, he gets fired and somebody else picked him up. And, you know, how this guy is able to work and get all these jobs in broadcasting and newspaper, whatever, is unbelievable to me. And he has, you know, we've known that he's made targeting women, especially women of color, that that's the, the, the path in which he's chosen to get attention, to get notoriety, whatever. And everybody turns a blind eye because a lot of the people that he goes after are black and uh, black and women of color. And so everyone turns a blind eye. And so, you know, we've been hearing like his show is like literally every show it's, it's going down to the point where I think on the 18th, his show was like, he only had like 24,000. I mean, again, it started from 400,000 people um, or 396,000 or whatever, close to 4,000 people. And every week it goes, Go, it goes down to the point where, again, on the 18th, he only had 24,000 viewers. And then by the end of the show, it became 10,000. And it's like, this is a guy who has 7 million followers on Twitter. And only 10,000 are there watching his show. I think that the average now is like 40,000, whatever. That's what it's averaging out to be per show. But again, this guy has 7 million followers on Twitter. He also, they also have a YouTube account. He, this is a guy, again, who just signed a $50 million deal with Rupert Murdoch. And he can only average about 40,000 viewers. And again, on the 18, that went down to 10,000. And so all of that and everybody is making fun of him and laughing at him because, you know, he's always about ratings. And then all of a sudden his ratings is tanking and he's like, well, it's not about ratings. You know, the, the type of ratings that's happening is, you know, outdated, whatever. I mean, the new platform he's on, what is like talk TV or whatever it's called. There were during prime time, there were, um, you know, the, the other hosts they would literally record zero viewers. It was so small that what, whatever system they used to record how many views you have, it couldn't pick it up. It recorded as zero, like zero people watch the shows. And so, you know, people have been on him and laughing at him and all of that stuff. And and the, the thing about it is like, 
it's a great example of when you don't give air and don't give oxygen to thing because people are, are just sick of him and they refuse to watch it. And now see what's happening. It shows tanking. And so then this story came out with this comedian that he had on the show um, who basically also called, I think she's the one that called him out. It's like, are you interviewing me or am I interviewing you? Whatever. But she basically, you know, claimed that P.S. Morgan uncensored show tried to censor her. Um, censor what she was going to say. And I, I'm sure you guys, you know, you've heard this. And uh, I know Baron talked about it. And, you know, I don't know, Anne may have talked about it. So for you guys who have heard it, um, you know, bear with me a little bit for those who may have not heard this story. But anyway, um, so uh, Kate Smurthwaite, um, she went on the show and then after she tweeted that she said, today, my life is weird. I sat in a green room of Piers Morgan Uncensored. The producer has just told me at least three things not to say on air. LOL. Actually censored. Then the guests, um, when the other guests arrive, who will be on the second half uh, show is Joan Collins. And then so Pierce got upset when she talked about, you know, that she was censored. They told her what not to say. I mean, the show is called Uncensored, meaning you could say anything, which <laughs> ended up uh, a few days ago, I think, where some guy was on the, um, you know, it was he was interviewing some guy and some guy called him a huge cuss word on the air. And he fusely apologized, but, you know, it's, the show is called Uncensored. So the fact that she is saying that they, you know, Kate is saying that they tried to censor her. And, you know, she's, uh, um, so Piers Morgan, you know, responding to her Twitter, he's like, I checked and nobody tried to censor you. We don't censor guests. That's the point of the show. And Kate was like, she wouldn't back down. She's like, yes, I was. Great. Have me on again and I'll say all the things that I was told not to say. I don't think Piers responded because he knows it's true. And what are the things he, you know, what are the things they told her not to say? Um, well, she it says, um, you know, she talks about, you know, the meet the producers, um, they, you know, planning, they do a meeting planning, give her ideas for the show and all of that stuff, which is normal, you know. But then um, they made their remarkable request for a show that's called, um, it's a uh, reading. It says um, a, a remarkable. Uh, I'm sorry. After after a morning meeting, I had a confirmation call too. They were looking forward to having me on. The only thing was, they'd like me not to mention a couple of things I had to say in I had said in the earlier conversation. A remarkable request for a show that is likely that's literally called uncensored. She said they didn't want me to get too personal with Morgan. They didn't want me criticizing or seeking to explain, seeking for him to explain his vindictive obsession with Meghan Markle. The main thing they didn't want me to say was, you know, that no matter how many hours you spend slagging off her, she's not going to shag you. True, funny, insightful, what's not to love? And that was what they didn't want. They didn't want her getting into Pierce's obsession. They, they are fine with Pierce saying all kinds of negative things against, against Megan. They are fine with him abusing, bullying, and harassing Megan on a daily. They are fine with it. But they want to make sure Kate doesn't get too personal with him and make him explain his obsession with Megan, his vindictive obsession, as, as she says. You know? And... It was like, you know, and <laughs> the thing about it too is like, and I do, I think I forgot to bring that part in because she talks about, you know, his um, childish obsession. And I think this is, um, I think further down in the article, you know, she called it um, his, um, his obsession with Megan and is constantly attacking Megan as childish. And that was one of the things that for me, um, I've always had a problem with because they do the same thing to Donald Trump. These abusive, narcissistic men. They always they call the you know what they're doing temper tantrum. They refer to them as two year olds. They refer to them as childish. They attach all these innocent characteristics. I mean you know kid two year old throwing a tantrum to grown men who are using their platforms, using their power to abuse women. 
And so my thing with this whole thing, and I, you know, I'm going to post the article so you can read it. But my own thing with her was that was calling um, Pierce Morgan, what he was doing childish. And, and yeah, it just, again, that is the reason why I think a lot of people don't take what Pierce Morgan has been doing to Megan seriously, along with the fact that she is a woman of color. Um, they don't, you know, if it was a white woman, he's do, he was doing this to, and he's been doing this for four years. If it was a white woman, <clears throat> they would have stepped in. Somebody would have stepped in. But because it's Megan, because, you know, because he's done it to Naomi Osaka, he's done it to, you know, other women of color. And this is the pattern of abuse that people, you know, they just sort of turn the other cheek or turn the other way. And write it off as, oh, he's just being childish. Oh, he's just being, you know, throwing a tantrum. And they wouldn't look seriously at the fact that Pierce Morgan is abusive. He's a bully. He's harassing. He is hiding behind a press pass. He's hiding behind journalism. And he's using that to use his platform to harass people, to harass women. And so... Um, yeah, but also with this, I'm glad she called him out. I'm glad she, you know, alerted everyone. And, and I'm glad people are, you know, especially most of his 7.5, 7.5, whatever million um, followers he has, are now clued into the, the fact that Piers Morgan is a fraud. He is an absolute fraud. He is there for himself. He's there for attention seeking. He doesn't believe any of the things he talk about. The guy is a one note person that is of all the things he does is screaming he's a screaming bore and nobody wants to be bored you know because he went into this thinking oh i'm gonna do this to megan i'm gonna you know she's it's gonna give her nightmares whatever instead he's just literally boring people his boorish behavior has played out Nobody wants to listen to sit there and listen to Pierce Morgan. People are now laughing and mocking him. The very thing that he was trying to do to Megan, especially, now is being done to him. He is, people are just, I mean, you should see some of the comments that this he's getting now, you know, and he's trying to play it off. But it's like, no, people are tired of him. And he totally overestimated his value. He totally overestimated his worth. And Rupert Murdoch sure did too. They assume because, you know, he was getting big ratings at GMB. But what they don't realize is the other people that were there, they were so passive, they balanced them off, you know. But to have someone just ranting at you for however long your show is, how long is anybody going to put up with that? That's just boring. And then, you know, when you see realize that this guy is just a one note, not talented, you know, hypocritical fraud, who would want to sit there and listen to him? And so people have just literally checked out. And good, rightly so. And so, of course, so since that is happening, then we this popped up. No shock to anybody because his ratings is in the toilet again. You know, he's gone down as far as 10... 10,000 people. There are squatties that get, I mean, Baron gets like, sometimes I see 11,000, you know, views. He's, he got down to 10. And so this popped up and, and nobody was shocked. Pierce Morgan takes a six week break from a struggling TV show. Of course he does. Because he's a coward. He doesn't want to sit there when the show, you know, when they, if they finally cancel it. You know, in that six weeks, they're gonna bring, you know, they're gonna bring in other people to try to, you know, cover for him for the six weeks. And he claims he's coming back. I would be very shocking if he did. Most likely, what they're trying to do is cancel it, but let him save face by not being there when the show is canceled. I mean, the show is probably not even six weeks old. I, I didn't do the count, but I don't think the show is six weeks old yet. This show is now going, at least him, going on a six-week break. So when the whomever unfortunate person decide to take this job, that show could be canceling on them head and, you know, have their name attached to a canceled show, which is, you know, which is what he is, which is what Pierce Morgan is probably like. That's why he's like, no, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to save face. So it doesn't cancel with my name on it. 
And I look, I am happy to see this. Again, all the people who have been wishing Harry and Meghan bad, who has been attacking Harry and Meghan one by one, they're coming down. One by one, you know. And this, I hope this sends a warning sign. And this should be a really, a, a yeah, a warning to others like Pierce who like to engage in this behavior and assume that the audience is going to stick with them. What they're realizing now is that this kind of vitriol, this kind of negativity, claiming that it's free speech, again, they just tried to censor someone on the show, um, you know, that those things only apply, you know, that kind of, sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, that kind of negativity, people don't want that, especially in this time. We don't want to listen to that. We don't want to listen to that on the daily. And so I'm glad even his fanboys have checked out on him, you know, and some of them are, probably, you know, I think, I don't know if it's fanboys or not, but they are definitely mocking him on, you know, mocking him on Twitter, you know, and then Indy goes on to say, Piers Morgan taking a lengthy break from a struggling TV show. Piers Morgan is taking a six week break from a struggling TV show called Piers Morgan Uncensored. A reporter earlier, a report earlier this month that Rupert Murdoch's Talk TV has been rated as having zero viewers during a certain point during the primetime broadcast. Morgan's, Morgan show, show, Morgan's shows figures from Wednesday, May 18 shows that his audience went for, was only 24,000, which isn't that much for an evening television. No, it's not. And then again, as I said before, it then went down to, by the end of the show, is only 10,000 people watching a show. And I hope this is a warning. I hope that, you know, all the others who engage in this kind of behavior could see, you know, that who think right now that they are on this platform that they can scream, you know, and abuse Megan in any way and their audience is going to be there. This should be a warning to you. Again, P.S. Morgan has 7 million followers. Though some of those I'm sure are probably fake, but it does say seven million. And this is where his show has fallen to. So, anyways, I guess Megan is not going to be having any nightmares. I assume my Miss Montecito is having sweet dreams at night and not even focused and not even thinking or not even considering the Pierce Morgan at all in any sense of the word. I guess Pierce Morgan is the one that's gotten the nightmares over his shows. The same thing he wished for Megan, I'm sure when they started the show, he could have never figured this is where it was going to go. He would have never, you know, one, he's too arrogant to even consider that, the, that people wouldn't want to watch him. That's why his promotions were so arrogant. You know, he assumed people couldn't resist his, his nonsense. He assumed people couldn't resist his, you know, his lies. But this shows that people can and people did. And I hope this continues and I look forward to the show being canceled. So anyway, and again, I think the same goes for Rupert Murdoch and his, um, the same goes for Rupert Murdoch and the rest of his empire. I look forward to it going the same way because, you know, one, they just lost their, um, you know, the election in um, Australia, which could have, you know, hopefully the new um, prime minister of Australia would do something about kicking Rupert Murdoch's um, show out of, you know, his, you know, his empire out of Australia. Because look at what it has done to the politics of Australia. Look at what it's done to the UK and the US. So I'm hoping this is the beginning of the end of Rupert Murdoch. I, you know, again, Rupert Murdoch's empire and democracy cannot stand. They cannot coexist. One has to die. And we've seen as with in January 6th, what happened? You know, what can happen with Fox News, especially, and, and uh, other entities of Murdoch when they're given free reign? So anyways, that's my take on that one. But be careful of the things you wish for. Um, you know, <laughs> Pierce Morgan is learning that his wish for Megan to have nightmares is now his nightmare. So amen. And then, you know, saying on Pierce... I'm telling you, I don't understand some women. I don't understand British women. I don't understand, like, you know, one of the things like, like we were just saying is, you know, 
his attacks on women, his attacks on especially black women, women of color. And when Naomi Osaka was having, you know, she was having a, just a really rough time mentally and had to, you know, she left um, the French Open and she didn't want to talk to the press because they were really playing up in her, in her mental, you know, play with her mental health. And uh, we, we remember what happened and, you know, the French fined her $15,000 and then teamed up with the other, um, the other, um, you know, Grand Slams to basically bully her. And threaten her that they would, you know, that that they would ban her from the tournament and all. I mean, it just was a mess, you know. And so, Martina Navratilova, when it first happened, she was very unsympathetic. And then, you know, a lot of people, including myself, called her out. And then she tried to change her, you know, change her tone. And then she was called out even more because she's basically hypocritical. But anyway, Martina Navratilova decided to go on Piers Morgan show, and you see Piers Morgan tweets about it. And one of the things she t is talking about is Naomi Osaka, you know, because Russia, as we as I mentioned in the last episode, Russia decided to ban, um, uh, I'm sorry, the Wimbledon. Wimbledon decided to ban players from Russia and I think Belarus. And so the ATP and those, um, and the, the, what is it, WTA, whatever, um, they decided to strip, um, to not do any points. So players can't gain any points from Wimbledon as a retaliation. I don't know how it's a retaliation, but they figured out it's a retaliation for banning Russia and Belarus from playing in uh, playing at Wimbledon. So Naomi Osaka is like, you know, one of the things with her, the thing that inspires her is to see her go up in ranking. That's the thing that inspires her to see, you know, that she's doing well, that her, her ranking points are going up. And so I think she's now in the teens and, you know, she started the year at 30 something. She's now in the teens playing her way back in after taking a break, a mental health break. And so she is now trying to, she's, she said she doesn't know if she's going to go to Wimbledon because, again, if they're stripping the pointing system, she's like, well, I don't see what the point is to go because that's the thing that inspires me. And if it's not there, what's the point of going? Navatilova decided she's going to go on to, you know, Piers Morgan asked her about it, basically. And she decided to go on Piers Morgan and talk about Naomi Osaka. You know, because again, P.S. Morgan, the people that he abuses, whenever people come on there, he will bring them up so he can continue the abuse. But M Martina Navratilova, um, she she uh, told P.S. She's like, um, um, it's kind of nice if you walk away from a potential $2 million payday. Most people don't have that the luxury, N Navratilova told P.S. Morgan. I don't understand her mentality. I would like to sit down and tell her about the history of Wimbledon. And it's, I mean, why would you, first of all, when, you know, you know, Navatilova is on Twitter. She's on social media. So she knows what's happening on social media. Why would you go on a person who was literally abusing Naomi Osaka on, um, you know, when, Again, when Naomi took a mental break, this is one of the things um, that Piers Morgan tweeted last year when Naomi took a break. Narcissistic Naomi's cynical exploitation of mental health to silence the media is right from Meghan and Harry's playbook and um, of wanting the press cake and eating it. This is what he tweeted about Naomi right when she was going through her mental crisis. And here is Nay um, Navratilova in here talking about, you know, she can't understand her mentality, which is like her mind, you know, and that she would love to sit down and tell her about the history of Wimbledon. Like, how arrogant are you to think that one, that Naomi doesn't know Wimbledon history, that you have to sit down and impart to her wisdom. And then another thing to go on the show of a man who has been abusing women, including Naomi, and talk about her mentality. And I couldn't help myself. I tweeted at her. I was like, this is disgusting. This is utterly disgusting that she would do that, you know? And it's just like, I don't understand what some women think. It's like, this man has been, again, Martina has been on, she's on Twitter. You cannot tell me she doesn't know what Piers Morgan is doing on Twitter, you know? Because he was tweeting all through when Naomi was going through her crisis. So you can't tell me she doesn't know. 
And to go on the, the site of the show of a man who's literally abusing women, including Naomi, and talk about her mentality, and then arrogantly deciding that Naomi doesn't know uh, the history of Wimbledon, so she has to teach her. It's like, I'm telling you, there are just some women that are just, they're not allies. They simply are not allies. You know, and another one of those people that was very irritating to me was Mel B, Scary Spice, the same thing. And of course, the son, which, you know, P.S. Morgan has a contract with because, you know, they own both owned by Rupert Murdoch and P.S. also writes for the son. The son article that abused Meghan Markle, you know, sent um, private eyes to dig up all this stuff, including all her private information. The same son that abused Carolyn Flack to, you know, and bullied her until she committed suicide where Dan Wooten was working for the son. He was part of that bullying. Here is Mel B. After she got her MBE or whatever from Prince from Prince William when she got it recently. Here she is on Piers Morgan's show talking about her book. Her book is dedicated to all women affected by domestic abuse. Abuse is abuse, whether it's domestic or not. She is going on the show of an abusive person and talking about abuse that her and talking about her book for those abused on this show she also talked about Meghan Markle and how happy she was at when they initially you know the royal family initially uh, welcomed Meghan and all of that stuff she is on a show of an abuser talking about her book is for you I mean I I just I just I don't get it I don't get it so anyways, I, maybe y'all can explain, you know, help me understand this because I just don't, I don't understand it. So some women are just like clueless. They just like, I, I, I don't understand how you can't see the bigger picture here. I don't, it's like right in front of your face. I don't understand how you can't get out of your situation and see the bigger picture of what is happening. So anyways, moving on. Again, da, 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 da. change of music <laughs> is my, uh, let's see, mm -hmm. Ooh, change of music. <laughs> Invictus, something pleasant. Thank God for coming off of that mess. But anyway, Brian May, Brian May is a member of Parliament. Um, again, you know, um, Invictus, thank God for Invictus, who has been the shining light for us when, you know, we have to talk about messy stuff as the Royals and Pierce Morgan and all that mess. We have the brighting, shining beacon of the Invictus Games to get us back and centered and focused on love and support and family and friendship. And I'm so grateful for that. One of the things I'm grateful for, again, I talked about it in previous episodes about is how much the Canadians have embraced the um, the Invictus Games, how excited they are. This is Brian May, a member of Parliament Day. It's like, I'm happy to see that our government, in partnership with the province of British Columbia, will invest $30 million to host the 2025 Invictus Games in, Win uh, in Whistler, Vancouver. And again, I have just, I am just, blown away by how much you know canada and you know germany i haven't heard so much about what's going on over there but definitely canada for 2025 have embraced it and made you know harry had a dream he you know shared his dream with his with his mates and they have taken up that dream and just ran with it and again, that is kind, that's what you want to, when you have a crew, you want to give them your dream and pray to God that they will grab hold of that dream and make it theirs because that's when they will invest themselves, their heart, their passion and desires. And then it's not about you anymore. It's about the dream. And they are, Canada has just, oh, they just like put their arms around it and just squeeze it to their bosoms. <laughs> and they, uh, I mean, this is theirs. And nobody can tell them differently. And I'm just so happy to see how they have embraced their vets, how they have embraced the games, how they have embraced the uh, <clears throat> uh, the indigenous community, how they have embraced each other. And, you know, to hear them talk about it, it, it it's like the passion that Harry has. 
just kind of jumped into them and they have that passion and they are so excited to share that. They're like, we can't wait for you know the, the, the people who hadn't been to the Invictus Games to be able to see what happens there that you know basically bring a little bit of Hague to Toronto and make it their own there, you know. So I'm just really excited uh, for that. And um, I know others have, have shared this before uh, with David Weissman, and we we talked about David, um, you know, having um, being a vet and, and and you know being shot, um, and actually still carries the bullet um, in his body um, in, in Afghanistan. And it's, uh, you know, and David is the one that when Harry was at the Warrior Games, when he came up with the idea, it's like, you know, wouldn't this be great? We could take this back to, you know, the UK and this would be great. And, you know, it must be so amazing for David to have been the person there when it was just a thought. And to see where Invictus has come now and to see him as an ambassador. And, um, you know, we saw in the last episode, he was, um, he had shared, um, uh, he had shared, you know, his time in Colombia with the soldiers there in Colombia. And I was wondering when we were going to get pictures of Nigeria. And then it was like, up, up it came. And it was, it's wonderful. And I'm so happy, um, you know, to see him as an ambassador of, and again, David embraced that dream. Harry doesn't have to be everywhere. Harry, you know, doesn't have to, you know, go here and there. Here's David early in the year. Um, you know, he's in Colombia getting them ready and in Nigeria getting them ready to be part of the games. And it's just so wonderful to see that and to see how much they've embraced Colombia and Nigeria as part of the show. And David said in advance of Nigeria joining Invictus Community of Nations, I would um I was expertly hosted by Abu Babuja um in Abuja by uh, Derek Kobina and had honor of meeting many members of the armed community, armed forces community attending an annual remembrance parade and supporting a, a Nigerian Legion event. Welcome Nigeria. And I am so excited for the games, um, you know, to see, um, you know, oh, to see all the continents there. And it just, yeah, it, I, 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 you know, that was one of the things that I miss. And you know me um, about representation and what, making sure that our people are represented in all spaces. And even though, you know, I know like a lot, especially the U.S. team and in some of the other teams, they had some um, black and um, um, participants. But not enough that, that, you know, it's like I wanted more. And so it's great that Nigeria is going to be there. Colombia is going to be there. So we have more of a mixture. We have more of a diversity. And I just I just think it's fantastic. Um, so I look forward to seeing them next year in Dusseldorf. And uh, so, yeah. So thank you, David. Um, awesome. And it's so funny because David has this. Um, he's on Twitter. And so every day on Twitter, he does like, he, he does like a little video while he's running. So he gives like, um, actually, you know what? I'm going to post, I'm going to post, I should do that, you know, take his advice and post, um, post his video. So you guys can see it. I'll post, um, his, um, his link. Hopefully you have Twitter and you can uh, just click on the link and watch his video, but he does these most motivational runs every day or almost every day. And, um, as he's the head of peak stakes, so he does that. And so he shares that while he's running out running in the countryside, I guess, where he lives in England. So yeah, it's actually really kind of cool. So thank you, David. Uh, so yeah, let's see what else. I love this story so much. Um, you don't remember like a few episodes back, I could think a couple of episodes I've talked about this where, um, uh, the kids at school, one of them, um, you know, his dad was at um, Invictus and he, I guess the show and tell, <laughs> he, he talked about his dad and the dad was like, oh, my little man. And then this girl, um, her show and tell was that, you know, she met Megan and the mom was like, yeah. And the mom said the picture, the actual picture of um, her daughter and Megan. And here's another soldier. He is in a class. And one of the things that I love with this class, I mean, they're little kids and what an incredible experience it must be for them, you know, and if you, you know, if you look at the second picture, you'll see um, the second tweet, you'll see um, the Invictus games on the um, the screen there. And it's, I'm telling you, when you can have kids this age, you know, 
um, when you can, in, and they want to interact with you in class. I mean, look at all the hands that are up at it. You know, you would think asking questions and all of that stuff. If they, you know, it's amazing if you could get kids this age to engage in what you're saying, because most of them would be like, I'm bored. And you know how they are. They, they don't hide their feelings, <laughs> but it's just amazing to watch how engaged they were. You know, that's the first thing that jumped out at me. And, um, White White House comment, I guess it's a school, says KS2 really enjoyed hearing about the Invictus Games from one of our parents, Mr. McRi Mr. Rice, who competed in a range of events at the Games in the Netherlands in April. Um, well done, Mr. Rice. We really, we feel really honored that you shared your experience with us at We Are, and they talked, We Are Invictus. And I just thought it was so fantastic, you know, to share that with the kids because, you know, you think kids, you know, they're, you know, you wouldn't, I mean, you know, normally you probably wouldn't think that kids would be interested or excited to hear this and you know you look at all the hands raised and yeah they are very much engaged in this and so it just you know again that invictus spirit passed down to the next generation and what is so important is for me is you know just like when harry um spoke about him talking to archie about you know athletes like wheelchair basketball and stuff like that to help him to just normalize disabilities and so when kids see it, it's not going to be a shock. It's like, oh, okay, that person is just in a wheelchair. That's it. And then they move on, you know? And so it's just, it's so important. And, and kids really, they're interested in this stuff. You know, you wouldn't think they are, but they are. And so when you can get them at this age or younger and being, being this being a normal thing, then they will grow up so much more accepting and willing to, you know, not be, you know, not be crazy when they see somebody who's different or maybe in a wheelchair or maybe don't have arms and legs. It's not going to be a shock to them because for them, it's just a normal thing. So I just think this is really wonderful. And so Mr. Rice says, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to KS2 at uh, WHCPS about the Invictus Games, the power of sports in recovery and the range of options to accessibility sports. P.S. The kids were amazing, engaged, brilliant, brilliant questions, and polite. And he tagged, no, look at what he tagged. He tagged Healthy Heroes, Invictus Games NL, and the Poppy Legion. So again, they are working with all of them. And so I just think it was just really fantastic um, that he was able to go and share, and the kids were so engaged in it. So yeah, kudos to Invictus. And um, finally, we're coming to the end. We are still having the um, the uh, fundraiser is still going on. I think actually I did this yesterday and I did I forgot to um, check it today. We may be closer to sixty four thousand than this. So, um, but yes, we according to this, we have sixty three thousand seven hundred ninety six dollars. So the fundraiser is the, going until June fourth, uh, Lily's birthday. So if you would like to donate, please hop on there. the The link is in the show notes, so you can just hop on there and um, donate and get this number up. So um, you know, if you want to. <laughs> so yeah. It's again, squatties have been amazing. I mean, gosh, if you again, if you look at the right, it says ten thousand dollars. That was the goal. We have raised over fifty thousand dollars more than the goal. So I just think this is fantastic, and everyone who has supported, thank you. It's been amazing, and again. All proceeds have gone to World Central Kitchen as they are doing an amazing job around the world. So I, you know, I, I'm telling you, Squatties is, there is no organization or no, um, you know, supporters. I don't want to, I, I don't think of us as fans. I, I just think it's just like, we are, you know, we are supporters of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and, I, I, and, and, and supporting their work. I can't speak. Uh, supporting their work. And so I just think um, there is no better supporters than Swatties. I mean, uh, talk about jump in there and run to, you know, run to help. And, um, and again, what a worthy organization um, that World Central Kitchen is as they continue to do amazing work around the world. So, but anyway, guys, that's it. <laughs>
I know. It's like next time I'm going to, again, I'm stealing Baron's idea and get some transition music. I don't think my my cuts are usually as drastic as they were today, but today was very jarringly drastic changes. So we definitely need new some like change music to jump in there and help me out. So <laughs> yes, Baron, I'm stealing your idea. Um, so anyways, but thank you guys for watching. Um, as you know, you know, uh, the, if you, again, we do, if you haven't already, we, as the scrolly thing in the bottom says, please subscribe to our channel. Um, click the notification bell so that you know when we have dropped a video. So that way you can, you know, jump right in there and, and watch and listen to it. Um, you can also support us if you'd like to. No obligation. You can join our channel, the Two Cents Crew. And uh, that way you support our channel every uh, every month. And that was most grateful for that. Thank you so much for all of you who are members who have been supporting us. You are amazing. And um, I am forever grateful for that. Um, uh, also, like and share this video. Um, please, yeah, definitely click that like button and help us to build, you know, a bigger audience. And we want to make your audience a bigger community so we can love more people in our community. Um, so, yeah, that's... Um, Definitely, definitely help us share that with your friends and family so we can build the channel. And again, back to supporting us. Again, there are other ways that you can support us. You can. We do have uh, merchandise. Uh, feel free. It's, uh, the link is in the show notes. Feel free to um, drop buy our merchandise shop and purchase some merchandise that way you can uh, support us as well you can also have backdrops not this backdrop um i uh my dad's backdrop which i didn't put in again today but we'll do so another one shortly um we you can purchase art prints there as well that's another way we do have uh uh paypal we have cash up other ways to support us again no obligation but if you want to if you if it's something that you're moved to do will be most appreciated but again, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your love. I appreciate your comments, all of it. It has been amazing. So thank you so much. And um, uh, let's get this out of here. Yeah, thank you, guys. <laughs> I always forget that stuff up there. But anyway, uh, have whatever you're doing this weekend i hope you having a fantastic time and i will see you next time bye